So I'm going to talk about movement on the web, web animation, that kind of stuff. Um, movement is very powerful. Um, humans, for some reason, just love to see inanimate objects moving. Uh, that's um, some good examples are lava lamps. Um, <laughs> just stare at those for hours, minutes, maybe hours. Um, so for the most part, I'm going to talk about two types of movement on the web. Um, the first type being assistive movement. Um, this type of movement uh, kind of complements the, the UI, um, can increase usability, demonstrate context and relationships. Um, for instance, uh, animating to scroll, animating, animating your scrolling to an anchor. Um, kind of shows the user what happened rather than just directly shooting them to an anchor. Uh, it's a really simple uh, concept, but it's actually very powerful to kind of orient, keep the users like orient, oriented. Um, and then uh, they can just enrich the overall experience. Um, so just some quick examples of that are uh, accordions, loading indicators, um, Fil animated filtering, uh, those are really simple things that um, those seem maybe frivolous sometimes can, can really enhance the experience. Um, and the second type uh, is type two. <laughs> uh, and this type is just, why not? Why not have some fun with it? So um, I'm going to talk about this type mostly. Uh, even though type one is the only one that matters and this is just fun, uh, I think it, it's, it's valuable in its own way. So here are some examples of some that I've kind of worked on over the last year or so. Um, this is an internet list talk. So all of these are like pre-recorded videos because I was afraid that there'd be internet troubles because I'm a conspiracy theorist. So uh, this is a site that I worked on for a local software development man, Jared, right there. Um, and the logo here is, is like this asteroid thing. Um, and we just wanted to see it move because uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of frozen in time there and it kind of was just begging to be moved. And so we kind of built this little thing where just on hover, it kind of barrels forward. Um, it's not moving. This is not foolproof. Is it moving up there? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. It just doesn't on this preview screen. So we just kind of made it, made it do what it was meant to do, what it was born to do, uh, <laughs> <laughs> barrel forward into space. Um, and this is interesting. This, uh, this animation actually got ripped off by Looney Tunes. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I, that's mesmerizing, right? It's like a you know two-second animation, less than that. You can just stare at that for hours. Um, so this other one was just a really simple one that I did. This is one of the maybe the kind of first of this kind of style of. It's like they're not really U UI based at all. They they don't even matter, and you could remove them, and it wouldn't change the experience much at all. But this is just a simple one. Which when you get to the footer here, this like this windmill just starts moving. It's it doesn't do, it doesn't add anything, <laughs> really. And then you can roll over those flags and they kind of animate. And I, I just love, like, I can just seriously, uh, maybe it's just me, but I can just, like, mouse over those for, like, a few minutes. And it's just, I love seeing just the tiniest movement. It's, it's transfixing to me. Um, this is one I did kind of recently for the new MindMixer site uh, designed by Justin Kemmerling. And this is actually his idea. Um, but this kind of area of the, home page switches over to a map. You can see the, the toggle over there. And we wanted, he wanted like something kind of fancy to happen. And so we did kind of the, the typical like pins dropping on a map type thing. Um, so watch that happen. So this one, this one is, you know, UI based a little bit more than the others, um, but it's frivolous. Um, it doesn't enhance the experience um, or at least the content. But it's fun. Um, and here's like 
kind of the last one that I'll show you. Um, this is the footer of the new MindMixer site. And MindMixer, uh, it's a local startup, if you guys aren't familiar. Um, I just did a, finished a four month contract with them. And that's me right there. <laughs> they made, there's like, there's a bunch of these, but this is like the, this is kind of the smaller view. I'm just zoomed in a bunch um, to kind of show these animations. But one thing I love about them is that they like, they have such great iconography and it's really fun to play with. And so when I, you know, got a hold of this design, I was like, man, I want those characters to do something. And so over the four months, we just kept brain, brainstorming. We have a bunch that we want to do. Um, and here's a few that we ended up doing. Um, so the first one is bizarre and they come up, came up with this one, uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> and you get to see everybody as gladiators. Um, I came up with this next one, it's really simple. Uh, it doesn't even animate, but we just turned to ghosts. And this is the last one that we did, where we turned to astronauts. Uh, and I love this one, it, like, it's, it's, it's transfixing to me to just like sit there and watch myself like in space, which is like a lifelong dream. Uh, uh, but seriously, so we're, we're just gonna watch this for a few minutes and talk about it. Um, but it's really simple stuff. Like this isn't, I mean, this doesn't take any time to do. Um, but I think it's powerful, it's, it's fun. Uh, and it's, it's not even necessarily for the users um, completely. Like some of this stuff is like for the team. Like I think this makes like, I would hope it makes the MindMixer team more excited about their website, you know? Um, and kind of brings this like, they have some like uh, remote workers and I love this, like, the idea of them like, we're being able to like have fun with them and like interact with them, but not even be in the same, uh, you know, building. So that's just some of the, the recent kind of animations I've done. Uh, I'm gonna quickly talk about a few bugs that I've, I've found recently. Um, I didn't want this to be, really be a technical talk because you guys are all uh, much more smart than me. Yeah, much more smart. Is that even, does that make sense? I'm getting a no from the judge, uh, much smarter than me. So this is one. Um, I ran into this and it took me um, way too long to figure out. Uh, and it's just that Firefox doesn't like the null transform hack on iframes. And so if you animate an iframe with fire, like in Firefox, and you're trying to do the like hardware acceleration, like no, or null transform hack, which is this or the Translate 3D one, um, it just will, the iframes will all be black. Um, and it's, it was really hard to kind of find that out because the, if, 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 if it's on screen when you, when you load the page, it's fine. But then the ones that get like put onto, like if you're using a slider that you're hardware accelerating, um, those all will be broken. But then it will play audio. So if they're videos, you'll get audio, but you won't get any picture. It's really, really bizarre. And then the second one is that Safari doesn't let you animate uh, pseudo elements, but Chrome does. Uh, and, and this is even before the Blink stuff, uh, which was frustrating as well. But I just, you know, when I'm animating uh, pseudo elements, like those gladiator helmets, those are pseudo elements, I just, I don't care about Safari. They just, they don't get to see the animation. <laughs> they can see the helmets, just not the animation. So that was probably the most lightning, lightning talk of all time. So thank you.